as people saying, you know, well, anybody but Trump. Right? Well, I can, I'm here to tell you that it's not anybody but Trump. And I'm in this weird thing where somehow, I'm not sure exactly how it happened, but they vetted me, right, to be VP. So I got down to being the last three people. The, probably the coolest thing ever happened to me in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> but in that process, I got to spend a little more than three hours one-on-one -on -one with Hillary. So over several meetings, either, either just with Hillary or with Hillary and John Podesta, my, where's, is Robin out there? Where's my wife? Right here. There's my wife. So yes. Robin and I ended up the, the Saturday before, I mean, literally 10 days, nine days before the, the, uh, uh, the convention, uh, and went down to Washington and kind of hung out with Hillary and John Podesta. So those three hours, I can tell you a couple facts. One, I trust her completely. I asked her every question I could think of, and we had frank discussions about my background, and, you know, did I really drink frack fluid, or, you know, <laughs> all kinds of stuff, anything, and, and I asked her every question I could ask, and I can tell you, I, I trust her completely, and, and not to say that she has made mistakes, not to say that she, she has a profound distrust of the media, she thinks they're going to try and put her in the worst light no matter what she says, so she tries not to, to expose herself to the media, and that she and I both, and we talked about this probably for 20 minutes, and she said, you know, it's, it is my weakness. And she said, I know if, if I can't trust the media, they're not going to trust me. If the media doesn't trust you, then it's hard for the public to trust you. But mm -hmm. she understands that, but I think she has been beaten up so many times for so long, so unfairly, that, she, that that mistrust is going to take some work to get past. It's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But I can also tell you, and I've been in this game now for 15 years, I have never met another person at any level who understands policy as deeply and thoroughly as Hillary Clinton. Never. No, I mean, it's true. It's a fact. I mean, it's, Michael Bennett, I like to say my former chief of staff, he was my chief of staff for two years before, before he became superintendent of schools in Denver, before he became one of the best senators in America. Uh, but he is brilliant, right? Energy at the Yale Law Review, super smart, and he knows a lot of policy. Hillary Clinton knows more policy. She knows, and when we talk about workforce training and how do we, you know, try and do innovative apprenticeship mm -hmm. programs and use technology, everything that we discussed, she would say, well, you know, back in 1988, we did this and this in Arkansas, and then when, when you know, in, 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 in Congress, we tried to get them in 1995 to do this, and it didn't quite work, but we should have tried this. She had thought about it so profoundly and so deeply and understood successes and failures and how to make things work. You know, people sometimes will say, well, she's just in it for power, right? No, no, when people are in it for their ego or their power, they never take the time to really learn in great detail you know, all the facets of policy and initiatives, right? Which she has. I mean, look at who she's running against, right? <laughs> no, no, he is driven by ego, right, and, 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 and power, and he has never taken the time to actually learn policy. He's never read anything except maybe a newspaper now and then, whereas Hillary really is, has immersed herself in the challenges this country faces, the, you know, the, the issues around families and kids and the middle class, she, she understands at a level of detail which I think reflects, I mean there is someone she just wants to make the world a better place and she's had that genetic inclination to try and make the world better that I think almost everyone in this room has, right? You wouldn't be here, right? And there's, not everybody has it, right? Those of us that have it, and it's probably, I don't know whether it's a third of the population or a half the population or two thirds. I've learned that you get into trouble making generalizations with <laughs> percentages. <laughs> I was paying attention. But I think that, that, that she, Hillary, is someone who, who is driven by that impulse, that inclination to make the world a better place. And my God, that's who you want in the White House, not someone who actually is trying to, 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 to improve things and, and solve problems. She's, you know, and she laughed. I said, well, in a funny way, you're kind of like me. You're, you're a plugger. You're maybe not, you know, you don't, you're not the great speech giver. You're not the greatest, you know, go out there and have people go wild. But you just keep working until you get things done. And she smiled, this big smile. And she goes, that's exactly right. She says, I can't ever put that out and market myself as a plugger because that's not the way <laughs> politics works. But that's how I think of myself. And I think that's so powerful. One time, uh, 
I, had, I said to her, well, you know, some people think you just want to get back in the White House. <laughs> and she paused and she said, you know, I understand the Oval Office and it is part of being president. And so it's a tool that you have to use if you're going to lead this country. And then she paused and says, but have you ever gone up and look at the residents upstairs? I can't say this publicly. She kind of leaned towards me and she goes, it's not that nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and she basically, you know, she basically was describing that you're almost like on an island, right? At the end of the day, you can't go out and go see a friend or go, you know, have a cup of coffee with a friend or a glass of wine. You're kind of in this island. She says, you know, you're, you're, you're making these sacrifices, but so that you can really make the world a better place. And I think that's the, the most important thing I can say is I spent more than three hours with her over in that in, in end of May and June, the beginning of July. Uh, and I came away from it transformed. I was always a Hillary supporter, but once I got that opportunity to really spend time with her, I was like, wow, never once did I feel that there was a false note, that she was saying something and, you know, taking the safe route out. I mean, she, she said a bunch of stuff I won't repeat just because she wouldn't, probably wouldn't want it repeated, not that it was wrong or anything, but just because it's, you know, uh, some of this stuff is so complicated, right? When we talked about, about trade, and she said, you know, I think the TPP probably isn't the right tool, right? It, it probably could, should be improved, but then she said, but you know, world trade does lift billions of people out of poverty. So we've got to figure out how to make this, how to resolve this. Well, she doesn't want that out in the, in, in, you know, that's just a complicated thing to talk about. But it, it shows a, a depth of understanding that I think is, is exactly what we want in a president. So uh, that's the second thing. And then the third thing, I just can't resist. Uh, but Donald Trump is an idiot. <laughs> 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 there, there, there's, there's a place, there's a place in Alice in Wonderland where I think I think the Mad Hatter is talking to Alice in some way and, 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 and says something to the effect of uh, this kind of wagging the finger, saying people who don't think shouldn't speak. Right? <laughs> and, and somehow. This person, you know, and I get it, I understand, because I spent a lot of town hall meetings all over the state of Colorado. I think as a society, and, 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 and I think our leadership, we all have to share some blame here, as technology and, 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 and outsourcing, all these things has eliminated whole professions, we have not done a good enough job of training people who have lost their career and got mm -hmm. them into the new careers that are that's turning right. out. No, right. And I think that's going to be a real challenge. And to Hillary Clinton is, is the best prepared person in, in my lifetime to be the President of the United States from day one. And I, I will say one other thing. Uh, when she, called, she called me the Thursday before uh, the convention started and just said, you know, thank you for going through this ordeal. You know, one time I, had, I was interviewed by five superstar lawyers, right? And they're all donating their time to the campaign for six hours, right? So two hours and you get a five minute potty break. Two hours and you get a five minute potty break. Two, I mean, it's kind of an ordeal. And, and she called back, she called up and just said, you know, I want to let you know, I think we're going to go in a different direction. And she picked Tim Kaine. And I think in retrospect, it looks like, and I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily, it's not like I'm not uh, ambitious or, you know, I've got plenty of confidence, but Tim Kaine was the right choice. And her goal was, she said, you know, if we win, and she kind of laughed. She said, you know, you and Tim Kaine are a lot alike. You both love music. You both play kind of bad. You're bad musicians, but you love the music. <laughs> you both speak a little Spanish. You know, you've both been mayors. You've both been governors. Um, but she says, I need, if I get elected, I need to reach out to the Republican Party and in the Senate. And Tim Kaine is universally respected, universally admired, you know, by all, the, all senators, Republicans and Democrats. And she says, he is someone who I think could really help me in, in a way that this country really needs. And it was, you know, what can I say? She's exactly right. That's, I mean, he is the perfect person. And I know he's, he's gotten into Colorado a couple times. You get a chance to meet the guy. He is the same thing. He's good. He's just a good person and cares about all the right things. And I think he's going to be the next vice president and he's going to be incredible. So thank you all. Hillary Clinton's the greatest thing in the history of politics, and Donald Trump is the worst. <laughs>